Ukraine may destroy Russian three-ton Fab 3000 bombs in warehouses of Russia. Russian Defense Ministry showed a video of an Su-34 striking Ukraine with a three-ton Fab 3000 bomb. In response, the presidential administration called on the West to allow enemy aircraft to be destroyed on Russian territory. The head of the presidential administration of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, noted that the Russian militants are launching these attacks from Su-34 aircraft based at airfields, which Ukraine must destroy to protect its people. Therefore, he emphasized that the country needs permission to strike deep into Russia with Western weapons so that Russian planes no longer drop these bombs. One such decision can save many lives, summarized Yermak. The founder of the charity fund Close the Sky of Ukraine, Lieutenant General Igor Romanenko told how to combat Russia's use of Fab 3000 bombs against Ukraine. He said this on air during a telethon, answering a question regarding a video released by the Russian Ministry of Defense in which an Su-34 aircraft strikes a Ukrainian settlement with a Fab 3000 bomb. This is a gradual increase in efforts, raising our potential for destruction with these types of high-explosive bombs. They have become controllable, more accurate, and due to their belonging, they fly a greater distance. And this causes serious damage to the objects of the defense forces of Ukraine, Romanenko noted. According to him, this problem has existed since last year, but the Russians are increasing the power of use in bombs. That is 250 kilograms, 500, a ton, 1.5. Now this power is increasing to 3,000, the expert noted. Romanenko added that Ukraine knows how to deal with this. We need a tool to implement it. Those bombs need to be destroyed, firstly in warehouses, with accessories, and there were corresponding strikes by our unmanned attack vehicles. Secondly, on the ground, we need to destroy the carriers and these bombs at airfields. Separately, for example, the Su-34, or when these bombs are attached to them. But on the ground, and thirdly, destroy their carriers such as the Su-34 already with bombs in the air, he said. The lieutenant general gave an example that this could be done effectively with anti-aircraft missile systems, such as SAMP-T and Patriot. Romanenko added that we are talking about a range of 100 to 150 kilometers, and it would also be possible to destroy them by increasing our air defense potential with the introduction of 4-plus generation aircraft. This is not only the F-16, but also the Gripen, Romanenko noted. Among other things, he also added that Swedish airborne early warning aircraft must be deployed to destroy enemy targets in the air, on land and at sea. This will significantly improve the effectiveness of our weapons, the expert explained. Russia runs out of mechanized resources, Russian soldiers die as fast as they arrive in Ukraine. Ukrainian military and political analyst Alexander Kovalenko notes Russia will always have human resources but faces serious equipment issues. He shared his opinions with Espresso TV. The Russians use two resources, human and technical, i.e. the mechanized component. Russia will always have human resources. They will always be able to replace this indicator, but the Russians have serious problems with equipment. The year 2024 may be pivotal for Russia regarding their ability to compensate for losses in their mechanized component. Starting in 2024, their capacity to offset these losses will decline, resulting in a deficit rather than maintaining balance. This will affect their offensive actions, Kovalenko explained. According to the military and political observer with the Information Resistance Group, Russia is currently conducting offensive actions seizing territories. However, the effectiveness of these seizures compared to 2022 has dropped 80 times, although the number of Russian troops has increased. Currently, the number of Russian troops in the combat zone is 530,000, but their effectiveness has significantly decreased due to the lack of equipment. If the Russian command sets the task to advance at any cost, 
then in certain areas they can advance mainly with infantry until the end of 2024 and in 2025 using human resources, concentrating it in certain areas and organizing areas of constant meat assaults. But if we talk about a general offensive military operation with the capture of large areas, the Russians will not have enough resources for this in 2024, Kovalenko emphasized. In 27 months of hard fighting, the Russian military has lost more than 15,500 tanks, fighting vehicles, howitzers and other weapons in Ukraine along with hundreds of thousands of troops. The Ukrainian military's own losses are a third as heavy. And yet, the Russian force in Ukraine is bigger than ever. The army is actually now larger by 15% than it was when it invaded Ukraine. U.S. Army General Christopher Cavoli, NATO's top commander, told the House Armed Services Committee. Over the past year, Russia increased its frontline troop strength from 360,000 to 470,000. That's possible only because the Kremlin drafted more than 300,000 men starting in late 2022 in addition to increasing bonuses for volunteers. At the same time, Russian brigades have curtailed basic training for new recruits in order to speed fresh forces to the front. But these unprepared new recruits don't survive very long on the front. Lately, between 800 and 1,000 Russians have been dying every day in the wider war, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Russian soldiers die as fast as they arrive in Ukraine. The Estonian Defense Ministry concluded in one recent study that killing 100,000 Russians this year would permanently damage, if not collapse, the Kremlin's mobilization effort.